Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to Sunday School again. It's good to have you with us. Now, do you remember two weeks ago, we learned about how the Lord God is eternal. And last week, we learned about how he is all-powerful and all-knowing. This week, I want to look at a verse in the Bible where the Lord God says that all the nations of the world are as a drop in a bucket to him. Now, we might look in a bucket and we see a drop of water from the last time we used it, and we think to ourselves, it's of no significance at all, it's not important. And the nations of the world are like that to the Lord God as well. He knows when all of these empires, all of these nations will start and when they will end. Now you might have learnt about some of these nations and empires before. What about the Roman Empire or the Greek Empire? But to the Lord God, these empires are as nothing. He has a kingdom of God which is so much greater. It is greater in number. It's of greater importance to the Lord God himself. He has set up this kingdom for himself. It is his kingdom. So why would you not come before the Lord God and ask him if you can be part of that kingdom as well? And you can turn to him, have your sins forgiven, Trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and you can be part of the kingdom of God, the greatest kingdom of the world. Now, shall we pray together? Dear Lord and loving Heavenly Father, Lord, thou art the King of kings and the Lord of lords. The kingdom of God, Lord, is thine own personal special kingdom that thou hast created for thyself. It is full of people who have turned to thee full of people who have been bought and purchased by the Lord Jesus Christ. So, Lord, we pray that we can be part of that kingdom too. Take our sins, Lord. Work with us as you will choose. We pray that we might be people who thou dost look after and protect and guide all the days of our life. So, Lord, we pray. Bless us now. Help us, Lord, to listen to the lesson that comes up. And we pray, Lord, that this Sunday school would be of such great blessing to each one that watches. We pray these things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now shall we sing that chorus, Wide, Wide as the Ocean. And we'll go to our lesson. Good morning to you all. It's lovely to be back. Today's Sunday School lesson is another parable. Remember, a parable is a story with a heavenly meaning. You can find the parable that I'm going to talk to you about today in the book of Luke. Luke's Gospel is found in the New Testament, which is at the back of your Bible. The books go Matthew, Mark, and then it's Luke. And you need to turn to chapter 10, and we're going to be learning from verses 25 to 37. Firstly, let's think of a dangerous road near where you live. Is there one? Near where I live, there is a motorway and an A road with very fast cars on them. What makes these roads dangerous? That's right. It's the fast cars that go up and down them. But I wonder if you can think what would have made the roads and tracks in Bible times dangerous. Not cars, for sure. Maybe carts? Definitely thieves and robbers. Today's parable is about a journey on one of these dangerous roads, but it's about much more than that. Let's find out. I expect you children all know someone, maybe at school, who is good at asking clever questions. Well, at the beginning of our Bible passage, we meet a lawyer. A lawyer is someone who knows the law 
and helps other people to understand it. This lawyer wanted to be clever. He wanted to trick the Lord Jesus with his clever questions and then he wanted to criticise the answer. But the Lord Jesus is God, isn't he? He wasn't going to be tricked. He didn't give a long answer to the lawyer. Instead, he asked a question right back. This was the lawyer's question to Jesus. Read along with me in Luke chapter 10, verse 25. Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Or, in other words, what do I need to do to get to heaven? Jesus asked, what is written in the law? And the lawyer said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength and with all thy mind, and thy neighbour as thyself. Jesus said, you have answered right, this do and you will live. In his heart though, that lawyer was pretty sure he was already good enough for heaven. He really wanted to catch the Lord Jesus out, but the Lord Jesus knew what was in his heart and he knows what's in my heart and he knows what's in your heart too. But we can't see into each other's hearts, can we? So how do we know if a boy or a girl or a man or a woman is truly a Christian? Is it because they say so? Is it because they go to church and Sunday school a lot? No. If someone truly loves and follows the Saviour, we can tell by how they behave, what they do, how they treat others. Their words and their life will match up. People can say a lot of things that sound good, but they may not truly feel that way. It's very hard to pretend that you truly love those around you and to take care of them and show them that you love them by your actions if you don't really love them. Well, that lawyer asked another question. Who is my neighbour? And the wonderful Lord Jesus answered that question with a stunning parable. Listen to what he said. A certain man was traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho. The road was mountainous and lonely and dangerous and thieves lurked ready to attack. This man who was traveling was probably hoping to reach an inn, a place to safely stay at by nightfall. But before he could get there, he was pounced on by thieves. They attacked him and beat him, took his clothes and all of his valuables, and they left him almost dead. He couldn't move. He just lay in the road, waiting to die. After some time, a priest came walking by. He worked in the temple. He helped to lead and arrange the services. He would have been highly respected by the people. When he saw the poor injured man lying on the side of the road, he did something terrible. He did nothing. He crossed over and walked past on the other side. He didn't even stop to look or talk to the man. Next, a Levite came across the road. He also worked at the temple and would have been well respected as well. He came near and looked at the dying man but he didn't want to get involved, so he turned away and carried on his journey. Shocking, isn't it? But after a while, a third man passed along the road. He was a Samaritan. The wounded man was Jewish, and the Jews and the Samaritans did not get along. They were enemies. Even though they lived in the same country, they didn't like each other at all. It would be very unusual for a Jew and a Samaritan to have anything to do with each other. This Samaritan man saw the wounded Jewish man and his heart went out to him. He came right where he was and he was moved with compassion for him. He cleaned his cuts, soothed them with oil 
and he very carefully lifted him onto his donkey and walked next to him as he took him to the nearest inn. He rented a room for him to rest in and got him food. He made sure he was comfortable. The next day, the wounded man was too weak to travel, so the Samaritan gave the innkeeper some money so that he could look after him. He told the innkeeper to take care of him and promised to pay for anything else the injured man might need when he came back to the inn later. In short, the Samaritan did everything for the wounded man, even though he didn't deserve it. Now, said Jesus, which of the three men was a neighbour to him that fell among the thieves? The lawyer answered very clearly, he that showed him mercy. Jesus said, go and do likewise. Jesus taught us to love our enemies, to be ready to do good and help anyone in trouble, even if we don't like them, even if we don't know them. Jesus taught that we should love others in the same way that we love ourselves. We should treat people in the way that we would wish to be treated. This is an important lesson that we must learn from this parable. But there's so much more. Just as that man was on the journey, so are you and I. We're on the journey of life and there are lots of dangers. We should grow from happy, secure children to pleasant, hard-working and worthwhile adults. But we come under attack on this journey of life, from the sin in our hearts and others that spoil everything and make things go wrong. And when life is sad or hard, we try to make ourselves feel better by turning to things that can't help us for very long at all. Things like sports and hobbies, even our friends and going to church. After a while, we realise that these things can't help us with our pride, with our jealousy, with all our other sin. They just cover it over for a bit and we are disappointed in the end. We are still poor and wounded and weak from our sin. But the Samaritan in today's parable gives us hope. Remember how he came right where the wounded dying man was and helped him. Well, the Bible tells us that the Lord Jesus did that for sinners like us. He showed us such amazing love. He came right down to this sin-sick world where we are suffering and wounded. He came when we were his enemies. And he did the most awesome thing. He paid the price for our sin. He took the punishment of all of the sins of all of those people who will ever put their trust in him alone to save them. He showed such love and compassion on sinners who lay helpless in their sin. We didn't deserve his help, but he still came. And how did he help us? What did it take? much more than the Samaritan did. Sin is so serious and God cannot pretend that it hasn't happened. He cannot overlook it. It needed someone pure and guiltless to be wounded and bruised for our sin. The Lord Jesus washed our sin away by giving up his own life on the cross 